So my name is Frederick Thailander. I am a senior game designer and I'm in charge of weapons and weapon modding in Tom Clancy's The Division. Uh, we're going to take a look at the different types of weapons and what you can do to them and how they marry the RPG with the shooting in our title. So when we started doing weapons in this game, we felt like we had to find a way to marry the role-playing game to the shooter game. We always knew we had to have an excellent shooter, third-person shooter game, but we also had to make sure that the uh, role-playing elements were uh, relevant and felt uh, recognizable to role players. So to that effect, we've tried to make sure that each weapon type in the game has its own unique characteristic, much like let's say, dual-wielding daggers versus a broadsword in an RPG feels very different. We didn't want all of these automatic weapons to just be uh, visual variations. So to that effect, we went ahead and found core mechanics for each type of weapon. So we have these six categories that I mentioned. We have light machine guns, assault rifles, submachine guns, marksman rifles, shotguns, and sidearms. Let's start out with a pretty beefy light machine gun. Light machine guns start out with a large spread and a lot of recoil and as you shoot them actually gain accuracy and precision to encourage these long firing sequences and that type of gameplay that light machine guns really should have. Your classic assault rifles on the other hand behave much like you'd expect from most third person shooters where they have some kick and some spread that goes gradually, but are generally quite accurate. Submachine guns, on the other hand, quickly go to their full spread, but they stay there and they're really stable. So you, if you're at the right range, pretty short range, you can pretty much spray all you want with them. Let's look at a classic sniper rifle or marksman rifle. If you look at the top right, uh, or the far right, you're gonna see that it has plus 137 headshot damage. This is an RPG roll that's happened on this weapon. All marksman rifles, and marksman rifles only, have extra headshot damage rolled on them. And that's something you're going to be looking for when you're upgrading your marksman rifle. The submachine guns have extra critical strike chance rolled on them, etc. The sidearms have their little subcategories almost, where a revolver will behave very differently from a semi-automatic pistol and obviously the double barrel shotgun in, in turn. We're going to look at a really high-end weapon. So this is a high-end version of a tactical to M249 paratrooper. So it looks a little bit like this. It's a unique M249 model, different from the other ones that we have in the game. And if we look to the right, it has a section called Talents here. On legendary level, they actually come with one talent active. So this one reaches max, ac max accuracy much faster when shouldering. And there's two more talents on there, and they have requirements. So it has Restored, where killing with this weapon removes negative status effects like stunned or burned or things like that. And then it has Ferocious, where damage to elites and named enemies is increased. So that might be really good for, for fighting really hard enemies. But you can see by the red numbers next to it and the gray text that they're not active. So this is where the gear game and the RPG ties in. These require you to have a certain amount of stamina, firearms, or electronics on the rest of your gear to be able to achieve unlocking those things. So you might get a new gun, and you'll, you're going to have a look at those talents and you're going to go, oh, I have to start collecting more electronics and stack for that. And so it really drives that gear game where you, you're trying to realize the potential of the weapon that you've uh, gotten. That's sort of where we started, trying to find how the shooting and the role playing marries that stat building. And that's where you start building a build based on your gun. So you have a high critical strike chance. You might want to pick talents and other things that benefit from that. Things that uh, trigger off of critical strikes, for instance. Further than that, obviously, depending on which model of gun you've found, there's up to four mod slots, you got optics, got under barrel slots, magazines, and barrel slots. This is where you customize it both to your own preferred style, if you feel like it kicks too much, or if it doesn't zoom enough, or if it has too much spread. Um, but this is also 
sort of the equivalence of, I guess, uh, gems or enchantments in a traditional RPG where you see you have all of these uh, attachments that not only does something for the game, so a suppressor will uh, reduce the uh, sound detection distance, but it also in this case has rolled some critical hit chance and some reduced threat, which is a group uh, thing. So in this case I put that large scope on my and a silencer on my M4. Well, all of a sudden I can zoom in and do those headshots with a silenced M4. The functional use comes from that shoot, realizing that shooter background and then the statistical stuff is where they carry the RPG torch into the shooting really. So I, th I think that's something that people are going to appreciate and that really harkens back to that authentic uh, that authenticity, that clancy authenticity that we're uh, realizing through these weapons as well. I'm really happy with how we married a super well-functioning cover-based shooter with these RPG mechanics to where they don't, where they complement each other and don't interfere with each other. And I think people are going to have a lot of fun figuring out not only their desired play style mechanically, but also stat-wise, uh, given these items.